Good afternoon. I'm Catherine Moyes. I'm five foot three, so I'm going to stand next to the podium. Thank you. So I'm going to talk about using data extracted from internet reports by HealthMap to model disease risk so that we can provide estimates for disease risk in areas where there's no data and fill in the gaps. The next slide, we have two examples of this. So we have a map of malaria prevalence and a map of predicted dengue occurrence. Oh, thank you. And it took us two to three years to collate the data for these two maps. But we want to bring that process down to two to three weeks. The first task in doing this is we need to know whether a data point represents an infection occurring at a specific location or an infection occurring somewhere within a wider area. And so we've built a system that classifies health maps data points according to the area they represent and then links them to polygon data that goes through to our models and in that way the model can account for uncertainty in locations. The next thing we want to do is we want to be sure that the data represents one or more infections occurring at that location at that time. So to do this, we've built a system where disease experts create a training data set by validating data points. And then a machine learning system kicks in and validates new data as it comes in. But a subset of that new data always goes through to the experts. And in that way, the training data set is up to date. And if the disease changes, we can account for that. So going into this in a little more detail, this is the interface where users can validate data. A user can select a data point and decide whether it's valid, invalid, or whether it's uncertain. And this system is now live, so you can go to this address, register, and validate data points, and we'd be interested in your feedback. We've also created a video that shows you how to do this. So once we have a training data set from the experts, each data point is also assigned three more values. One is the feed or the data source. One is the current probability of disease occurrence at that location. And the third one is the distance of that location from the current disease extent. We then train six logistic regression predictors on independent training data sets. And as data comes in, they're assigned six values for validation. And if those six values are consistent, we take an average of those, and that's used as our validation score. If they're not consistent, we have the option of going through five rounds of this ensemble process. And if we never obtain a consistent score, then the experts will score that point for us. Our system also involves tools which enable experts to update disease extents, and these are also available online, so you can go and see these or contribute to them. And our model outputs are also now available. This is live online. So our model outputs include disease risk maps and the predicted data behind these maps. You can view them at the website. You can also download all of this information. If you want, you can drill down in a little more detail and see our model validation statistics and also the top predictors for that model run for that disease. And in this example, I don't, you can't see that, but um, the top predictor for dengue at this time was um, precipitation. So imp some important points to note with our system. We are aiming to produce the best possible contemporary map we can at each point in time. And we only go as far back in the data as we need to in time to produce a robust map. Because we're producing the best map we can each time, our maps aren't necessarily a time series. So you can use this data to produce a time series, but what you're seeing on our site is the best map that can be produced at that time. It's also important to note we're producing maps that show the probability of one or more infections incurring at a location. They're not maps of prevalence or incidence or zoonotic transmission events, although our group does work on all of those metrics. And finally, our maps can be used to generate population at risk statistics, and you simply need to overlay population density data on our maps to do that, which we think is one of the most important uses of this information. So I'm going to finish there with some acknowledgements, and just to reiterate one more time, our site is live, so if anyone wants to register, give it a go and feedback to us. We're very interested in your comments. Thank you.